Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters, welcome back to my channel. It is time for my project pan finale. So I, um, I usually like to do these videos at the very end of the month or at like, the very very start of the month uh, just to make sure that I get like a full month of use out of the products before I give you guys the next update or in this particular case the finale. However, I was looking at my schedule and the products that I had in the project and I thought you know what now really is the time to do it I want to enjoy Christmas I'm going to be busy after Christmas um, and I'm not going to finish anything so I just don't think there's any point in continuing on with it also the awesome thing about wrapping it up a little bit early in December is it allows me to take the, pro the products that I want to pan in 2021 and actually give them a go. So um, the first like update after the intro of my 2021 project isn't me going, oh, why did I choose this? It's horrible. So there are benefits to wrapping this up a little bit early. Um, but I think, look, I have something very exciting to show you. I finished, uh, <laughs> I finished two products. <laughs> I finally did it. Finally, I finally finished the fucking sheet masks. Um, it was funny, actually. I had used this one. I remembered, I was like, okay, I'm going to use, you know, use one of my sheet masks. So I used up the Aceology one. It was nice enough. Um, there's, you know, it's it's nice. I would like, if I had more, I would totally use them. Um, and then this guy, well, I was going to film this update uh, yesterday and I realized I hadn't used this and I was like, get fucked. <laughs> get fucked, Hayley. Get fucked. You're going to use it. Um, so I used it and I put off my, um, my update. So this is the Dr. Jart Wrinkless Solution Sheet Mask. I was expecting this to be sort of like some sort of like miracle because it's supposed to smooth the appearance of lines and wrinkles. And it's also body heat thermosensitive, which means that it should like do something with thermal feelings on the skin. Um, it did nothing. It did nothing. Like I just would not bother. I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it again. While we're here looking at empties, uh, those two things, it is what it is. I'm actually going to take you through some samples that I'm decluttering because, um, I, I was pretty like, uh, I really, really, really wanted to get through all of my makeup samples in 2020. I wanted to like use them and know how I feel about them. And I can't say that I have achieved that. 100% but look I'm pretty close so let's do the ones that I'm getting rid of this is the J1 jelly pack it is like a it's a sticky makeup primer and it doesn't really offend me but it also I don't feel like it does a whole lot and the texture is so weird like it comes out it's a clear gel and then when you rub it together it's like it breaks up and then it like becomes a, a sticky primer and I just look there's one thing I've noticed as I get older the more layers I put on my face the heavier the makeup is including primers the worse it looks essentially so I'm just I don't want to keep a primer that doesn't add anything to my routine at the moment the only primers that i'm like yeah i'll actually finish it eventually like give me five years hydrating primers like the primerizer from smashbox but otherwise i'm just not really i'm not feeling them and i i want them out of my life essentially and especially when it comes to something like a sample size i'm not going to like force myself to finish a sample that I just don't care for. Same goes for this guy. This is from It Works, or sorry, This Works. And I mean, 
that's that's a, a brand name isn't it um this is the in transit camera close-up so this is a mask moist mask moisturizer and primer in one so this is just basically a thick hydrating primer but the scent it's like lavender like assault absolute assault of lavender and other really stinky fucking florals like I can't I can't do it but also what I don't like about this is the way that it sort of dries and sets on the skin it feels like you tried to rub a fucking face mask into your face and I'm not no thanks and then I have some like foundation -y samples so this one is from MAC it is a foundation I don't know it's in NC25 it's too dark for me I'm not I'm not into it I don't I'm not going to fight for a foundation sample. Um, I have two from Hourglass and I know that I could probably mix these two together and get a good shade, but also I don't want to. I can't be fucked. I don't care. Um, I think these are custom effects covered drops, custom, cu the oh, cover effects, custom enhancer drops, the shimmery ones. So I had a, bunch of these um I think I got rid of one last week that was too dark uh, anyway I found these in the bottom of my everyday makeup drawer and I was like just no because uh, you know what while we're here let's go on to the other samples that I have left in this project because there's not many and I haven't actually talked you guys through them uh to any like serious extent through this series um, so now is a good time. So the other samples that I have that I'm not getting rid of at this point are these guys and I'll let you know why I'm holding on to them. Uh, Cover Effects Custom Enhanced Drops. These are in Moonlight. I've tried these on my face. I do not like them, but I'm thinking maybe I'd like to use them on my body during summer. Um, the Hourglass Vanish Stick. No, Vanish Shimmer Stick. I don't know it's in champagne flash look this is really pretty I I love the color um, and uh, okay my issue with this is um, I like to put my highlighter over my um, set base so that it actually like pops if you put it under foundation foundation mutes it then you powder over it that mutes it um, and then if you want to like bring it back you've got a highlight over the top and if you use a cream things just start to look chunky and if you use a powder things start to look thick and this goes back to what I said earlier in the video where I was like less is more less is more less is more um, so I'm not sure that I love it I do want to play around with it just a little bit more though because I, I haven't used it much and I have a full size of these and or this sorry and if I don't like this then the full size can go as well in the future. Um, I also have some strobe cream from MAC. These are both in pink light. I actually I don't mind these. I put these on the same par as this guy. It just adds a bit of a glow so those guys can stay. I'll use them um, in 2021 like, I'm gonna like roll them into the project um, now I have Ciate watermelon burst hydrating primer I've only used this once and it didn't offend me so that can stay and I have the Illamasqua Hydra Veil uh, radiance primer I think no sorry rehydrating gel primer um, I haven't used this yet so that stays as well so I did get rid of a lot of samples I'm taking six with me into uh, 2021 which look I'm pretty happy with that all right let's get into progress of my other items um, look I just it's just not happening for me <laughs> nothing nothing good is happening in this project um, my Smashbox primerizer I didn't use it because I was using like well not this but I was trying to play with you know things that were in my um, project I was trying to finish off one of these one is very close but I, I just didn't quite get there uh, but this guy can stay I like it like I said it doesn't offend me um, I do 
you know I like the moisturizing aspect of it I don't feel like it helps my makeup application though or wear time or look or anything like that my Shul Mora light bulb essence foundation so I was here I'm now here I've only used a little bit I pair this with another Shul Mora foundation where I use uh, two squirts of this because this is in like a um, a dropper which is pretty cool um, and so two squirts of this and two pumps of another um, Shuamora foundation the petal skin uh, foundation for that's in the bottle not in the compact obviously the cushion um, so that one is slow going and look I will say this because I have to mix it um, there is a fine line of sometimes the mixing not going quite to plan because the other bottle is a pump bottle and it's almost finished if I have it on the wrong angle and it doesn't pump out a full pump it fucks up the color of this and I look orange because uh, this is not only the wrong undertone for me but also just like the wrong color so uh, look will it survive the will it stay I don't I don't know I'm gonna like deal with it in the new year I'll see how I go I might try and mix it with a couple of other foundations that I have that could use some deepening up okay next up I have the glow recipe watermelon glow ultra fine mist I just kind of forgot to use this so it was here it's now down here this is not a difficult product to use if I remember to use it but I think remembering to use it is the hardest part. So there's that. Oh, actually, here's one that I am considering done. It's from Wet n Wild. It is the Natural Beige Pressed Powder. If I can get it open. So that's what it looks like now. Um, all of this, like, this ring specifically here, this part, that's like in. <laughs> that's in. Like, you can't get a brush in there. I would have to dig it out. There is a little bit of product over here, but I just don't care. Like, I do not give a shit. This was 37.48 grams, now 35.69 grams. I'm considering it done. I'm putting it in my empties. That's not a powder that I would buy again. Um, I think I'm going to, like, if I'm purchasing powders in the future, I'm going to go for things that are a lot more refined. Um, probably, to be fair, things from higher-end brands uh, because I use so little powder these days and um i feel like it, it's fine i could probably buy one bougie powder that will last me a year or six months and not really have an issue with that my bronzer my bronzer from physician's formula so this was 59.93 grams now 59.62 grams when I introduced this, it was 66.37, but it also had one of those stupid ass brushes in the back. Uh, so take that down to like 60.94 at the second, um, like the sort of first update after I introduced it. That means I've used about, <laughs> about a gram. It's pretty bad. Now, I introduced this in August, and I would say um, for a bronzer to not have even worked off the pattern from the top um, in four months is a bit like, no, thanks. I've just, I'm not into it. I'm not into it. I don't mind the formula, but it's nothing groundbreaking. I own better ones. Um, I don't like the scent. It still lingers. It's not as strong as it used to be, but it's still there every time I open it, every time I apply it, I can smell it. Um, and I just feel like 11 grams is too much. I did check my, like my NARS ones and my um, benefit ones to see how big they were because they're probably up there with the biggest that I own they're eight grams um and I've panned them before and I've some of them you know I've panned them in less than a year so I just don't I don't care I just don't care 
Okay, let's do blush. This is from Colourpop. It is the blush sticks in under pressure. So this was 40.49 grams, now 40.44 grams. Uh, when I introduced it, it was 40.71 grams. I've been working on this for five months and I have used 0.3 of a gram, not even 0.3 of a gram. So, you know, that's a thing. It's still like, if I go like this, it's not even past like the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you get it? You get it. So I think I've already like discussed with you guys how I don't like products that are like a lifetime fucking commitment. I'm not married to a blush sticks. It's not my jam. Um, I'm going to hold on to it because I like the colour I am wearing it today. It, I can wear it really softly, which I love. But things like this just will not stand the test of time in my stash. They will go... They'll outlive me. Like, a makeup item that can outlive you is not a makeup item that I personally want in my stash. I want, I want makeup that I can finish. Okay, MAC Painterly Paint Pot. So, <laughs> I dropped this. And I broke it and like, mm. uh, so this was 51.15 grams, now 50.68 grams. I have been working on this all year and I have used, so it was 55.37 grams when I introduced it. Now it's 50.68 grams. So I've used like just a little bit under five grams of product, which is pretty good. It what? Can we do the maths on that, please? Because this is problematic. Yeah. Okay. So it's 4.69 grams, which is just a bit under 5 grams that I have finished. Right. This is, this is what it's looking like in there. There's still, you know, quite a bit of product. I would say maybe half or just under half. It's only supposed to contain 5 grams of product. It says five grams on the back, five grams, 0.17 US ounces. At this point, I'm just going to hold on to it. It's fine. I've been using it. I'm going to do a project where I bring in all of my eyeshadow primers and try them out and see which ones I like and declutter the ones I don't. Um, this one's always been on the chopping block. It is drying up a tiny bit. Um, and I've always said, once it's dried up, like, I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm not going to try and rehydrate it. But for now, it can stay in the stash. I know it works for me, um, so I'm, you know, not too fussed about it. CoverGirl Get In Line Liquid Liner. I am going to declutter this one. I'm just over it. I'm not really a huge fan of um, liquid liners that are like pot brushes. I just, I prefer a pen. I just find them so much easier to use. Um, so this was uh, 9.38 grams, now 9.31 grams. When I, oh, fucking hell. When I introduced this, it was 9.69 grams. And that was back in uh, Ju June, June. So I have used 0.38 of a gram out of this. I don't know how much product is in it. It doesn't actually say on the bottle. So, you know, there's that. But anyway, that one can go. I wouldn't buy it again. Oh, this is, this is my, my problem product. <laughs> Send help. This is the Benefit 24 hour brow setter. Like, don't get me wrong. I really like this product and I, I've been wearing it all year. And I like it. And I'm not, I'm not over it. I'm not sick of it. I don't want to declutter it. I'm going to keep it. But let me just give you my numbers and we're going to, you might understand a little bit where I'm coming from. So this was 16.48 grams at the last update. It's now 16.39 grams. I've been working on this all year and it started out at 17.33 grams which means I have used just under a gram. Now this particular product is weighed in mils. Mils don't always equal grams unless it's the consistency of water and this is not the consistency of water. This is supposed to contain seven mils. So at the rate that I've used it this year, let's say just for the sake of 
being very, very simple about it, but not actually accurate at all. Um, if I was to use this at the rate that I've used it this year and one gram equaled one mil, it would take me seven years to finish this product completely. But of course it would dry out before that happened. So there you go. There you go. Anyway, I'm going to keep it. I'll keep using it. Eventually it will dry up and you know, I'll get rid of it then. It's fine. Oh my goodness. Okay, this was a product that came out of left field for me and I did not expect to be panning this all year. Literally, I've been panning this since January. This is from Colourpop. It is a lippy pencil in Beeper and it's a beautiful colour. It's beautiful nude. I don't know if they still make this shade, but this is like, it's stunning. It's probably like my favourite nude shade in my stash. Um, and that is probably why I have managed to use this all year and not ever feel like I was sick of the side of it. So last month this was 5.35 grams, now it is 5.16 grams. When I introduced this, it was 6.64 grams, which means I've used about one and a half-ish grams of this product. Um, so there we go. It is supposed to only contain one gram but we do have to take into consideration packaging and stuff like that. I reckon I've got through like half the pencil basically. So <laughs> I'm holding on to it. I love it. What I've got to say about this particular Colourpop uh, lippy pencil because they're not all the same. I do know that. Um, the formula is beautiful and smooth and it's really, really pigmented. So you only use a tiny bit of product, which is fantastic. So I like it and I'm just going to keep it because I'm, I'm okay with it. My last product is the um, Rimmel Boho Nude from the Kate range. So this is what I've got left. This was 14.49 grams, now 14.4 grams. I introduced this back in... March? I think it was March. Um, and it was 15.2 grams, so I've used just a bit under, um, sorry, did I say 15.12 grams? Yep. Yeah. So I've used just under a gram of product. I don't know how much product is in there, um, but I, I don't even know if I've used like half the lipstick. I really can't remember what it looked like when I introduced it. Um, I like the colour. I'm actually not wearing it today. I'm wearing a Nabla Creamy Dreamy Liquid Lipstick in Hedonist. Um, I like the colour and I think I'm just going to hold on to it for now. It's kind of one of those lipsticks where if I'm not really sure what I want to put on, I put on this because it's safe and it works with everything. Um, and also, I because I enjoy it and it's still good, I just don't really see the point of getting rid of it. I thought I would. I thought I'd be like, anything I don't finish can just fucking go, but I don't really feel the, the need to do that. Like, I can declutter it in the future, basically, if I feel like I'm not into it. So that is it for my Project Pan 2020 finale. Um, I would definitely say, like, reflecting back this on this year with Project Panning, I definitely did not finish as much makeup as I usually would. Um, that's probably just due to being home a lot more, and I don't really like to wear makeup just walking around the house for no reason. Um, I like it to have a purpose when I put makeup on my face, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I'm still happy with how it went because I went through things. I did finish things. Um, I discovered, you know, cream blush. That's a new thing that I love. They just don't need to be this fucking big. Um, and I did declutter a lot of things uh, from this series, which is good throughout the year. Um, and I hope that that will be what I do next year as well. Use up stuff and declutter stuff. Um, I am doing a project pan in 2021 and we are going to use a hashtag. I believe it's just going to be team project pan 2021. Um, so, you know, if you want to use that hashtag and connect with other um, panners, then that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, and next year I am probably, I'm going to do full face project pan. But I'm kind of thinking I might just do 
uh, quarterly project. So instead of doing like a full face rolling project pan where when I finish stuff, I roll new stuff in and I just keep doing that all year and refresh every quarter, I might do like a full face, use what I can and then every single quarter refresh, 100%. Um, and if I finish stuff, great. If I don't finish anything, that will probably make me not want to do it in the future or I'll get halfway through the year and I'll change like what I'm doing because I, I probably won't like it if I don't finish anything. But also I want to be able to feel like I'm rotating through my products a bit. Um, at the start of this year I did do uh, monthly makeup baskets and I, I stopped doing that because it was um, too overwhelming trying to use my Project Pan stuff and go th through that stuff as well. So I, I'm not sure if I'm going to bring back the monthly makeup baskets in the future. At this point, I am not. Um, because I think I want to give myself a little bit of time to see how I go with Project Panning. And also how often we're going out and how much I'm wearing makeup and things like that. Like it's kind of a transition period at the moment. I'm trying to work out like what what is going to work best for me in the way that I live my life and wear makeup. How am I going to get the best results essentially. So that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Uh, but Project Pans will 100% be back in the new year. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed the year. Gold Gaga, my goodness. Um, it's a bit, a bit sad, isn't it? However, I'm thinking I'm going to, I'm going to have a go at like a mini st still a magnificent metal. And I do have another, um, Australis Metallics in my drawer. So, you know, in the future, you could, one of them could see a comeback. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave your comments about your project panning year. Have a little reflection on it. Let me know how you guys feel looking back on your panning year of 2020. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.